Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, one of Southeast Asia's fastest growing cities, a booming Asian tiger. But every year, Mother Nature threatens to bring it to its knees. Tropical storms, raging rivers, massive floods. The solution is brilliant. Carve a single giant road and water tunnel right under the city itself. When rivers jump their banks, the tunnel's road decks will be able to transform into massive flood channels to carry the raging waters under the city streets, leaving the country's billion-dollar economy humming along above, high and dry. Build it wrong, and millions of dollars of property and the lives of hundreds could be at risk. It would be the first combined storm and traffic tunnel in the world, a model for other flood-prone cities. But the threats of sinkholes, massive mechanical failure, and fire will haunt the builders of Malaysia's smart tunnel from day one. This is one of the world's most amazing structures. A 9.7 kilometer long megaton drilled through some of the most unpredictable ground on the planet. Amazingly, it's being constructed just meters below the streets of a major city. The smart tunnel will cost more than half a billion dollars to build. It will take over four years to finish, and the project's giant tunneling machines will grind through enough earth to fill up over 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This modern Asian metropolis lies at the intersection of two major rivers, the Klang and the Kombak. For more than a century, these waterways were the lifeblood of Malaysia's capital. But now, they may be the biggest threat to the city's survival. Every year, tropical storms lash Malaysia, causing its rivers to rage. When floodwaters reach Kuala Lumpur, the rivers can jump their banks and ravage the city center. Floods like this one leave a cleanup bill in the millions and cripple the city's economy for days. No one knows the problem better than Malaysia's Director General of Irrigation and Drainage, Dr. Kizro. Kuala Lumpur is a meeting point of two rivers, and at the point where the two rivers meet, this is a natural depression. It's, it's like a bowl in the river basin. And during heavy rain, this whole bowl gets flooded with water. Ever since Kuala Lumpur put itself on the map by building the world's highest twin towers, it's been racing to compete with the financial hubs of nearby Singapore and Hong Kong. Leaving its economy at the mercy of nature isn't an option. The Malaysian government desperately needs a solution. The winning proposal is a radical one. A plan that promises to tackle the flooding and the city's worrying rise in traffic delays in one go. The project is called SMART, short for Stormwater Management and Road Tunnel. The SMART concept is surprisingly simple. First, build a massive 9.7 kilometer long tunnel directly under Kuala Lumpur to safely funnel floodwaters from the Klang River at the north to the Karayong River in the south. Then, insert a three kilometer long double level toll roadway to help solve the city's traffic problems. Commuters can travel on the road decks while water flows below in a sealed flood channel. But that's not all. What makes the smart design truly unique is a feature that would arm the city against a worst-case scenario. If a giant river surge is headed toward Kuala Lumpur, the two road decks could be evacuated and serve as additional flood channels to carry the raging waters underneath the city and spare the country's billion-dollar economy above. It would be the first tunnel of its kind in the world. But building this megastructure just 20 meters below the streets of this major city is a monumental challenge. 
The ground under Kuala Lumpur is a tunnel engineer's nightmare, full of karstic limestone that can collapse and suck down buildings and even people above without warning. The smart plan is approved, but can Malaysia actually build it and finish the work in time for the next giant storm? January 2003. Malaysia's heavyweights in engineering and construction start work on the smart. But this kind of tunneling is new to them. The risks of the project are too great to go it alone. The solution is to bring on veteran Hungarian tunneler Gus Klaus. Gus knows that the stakes are high, and in tunneling, anything can happen. I started to work on tunneling sites in summer holidays, and I fell in love with the thing because it's interesting. It's always different. Nothing is ever the same again. A tunnel warrior, Gus has worked on some of the biggest underground projects in the world. Including the Channel Tunnel linking Britain and France. I worked on the Channel Tunnel, but the Smart Tunnel is much more challenging. To start, most of his crew have no tunneling experience. We only had a core of people, professional people who had the experience, and we had to recruit uh, people from the region, from Malaysia and from Philippines and wherever from the near region. And we had to train everybody on the job. January 2004, the first of the two mega machines start to arrive. It takes three months to assemble at the project staging zone. A giant shaft, 140 meters long and almost 30 meters deep, in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. To accommodate a stormwater channel and a double-level internal highway. The smart tunnel has to be more than 13 meters wide. The fastest way to bore a hole that big is to use some of the largest tunnel boring machines or TBMs on Earth. The giant drills, custom ordered from Germany, are 71 meters in length, longer than a 747, weighing in at 2,200 tons apiece. They are almost as heavy as a dozen jumbo jets. At the front, a 300-ton circular cutter head forged from high tensile steel will do the heavy work. A TBM is an amazing machine that both drills and builds. While digging out new earth, the massive drill edges forward. Then it throws up rings of high-grade concrete. These form the lining of the tunnel. From day one, senior project manager Gus Klados is under pressure to complete the project. If any machine can help him do it. It's this one. Each of the Smart's cutting-edge TBMs cost almost twenty-five million dollars. This machine has all the features. One could consider it a very luxurious one in the tunnel boring world. This is the Rolls-Royce of the tunnel boring machines. They're armed with the latest ring-building lifters and hydraulic rams. The massive cutter heads are larger than those used to build the channel tunnel. May 2004, the second TBM arrives. Any major damage would require custom repairs in Germany and set the project back months. From this staging zone, the plan calls for two TBMs and their crews to dig out. One team will head south to the Karayong River. The other will link up at the Klang River to the north. The job requires the tunnelers to work round the clock for nearly three years. It will push the men and machines to the limit. Tunneling finally begins in the South Drive, but immediately there's a problem. 
the workers are struggling to build the rings. The huge concrete lifters have to be controlled down to the millimeter using tiny joysticks. Malaysian engineer Ang Hawei has to keep the men on schedule. I mean, the first time we didn't know what to do actually. We just follow what they asked us to do. It took about uh, three hours for one ring build. At that pace, the project would take almost three years longer than expected and run millions of dollars over budget. And that's not the only risk. Boring these leviathans just meters below the city streets could cause a major catastrophe. It would be the first structure of its kind anywhere in the world. A giant dual-purpose tunnel for stormwater and traffic. If a flash flood strikes, the roadways inside the tunnel could transform into emergency water channels to help steer the surge safely under the city and spare its racing economy above. 20 meters under Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, senior project manager Gus Klados is under pressure to complete the smart tunnel before the next crippling storm. But his workers are still struggling with the materials and machines. Ahead, the giant drill is already in motion, grinding steadily forward. Behind, concrete segments are on their way to the TBM. One segment is 10 metric tons, and it is lifted by vacuum only. Giant hydraulic arms swing the segments into place. It takes eight segments to build each ring. Just like in an arch, there's a keystone that holds everything together. Using the power of suction, the lifters raise and position each segment down to the millimeter. Make one mistake, and the tunnel lining could crack. Above ground, two special fabrication plants are also in full swing, building the concrete segments. Each one contains more than 300 kilograms of steel rebar. They're held together with high-grade concrete, the kind used to build bomb-proof bunkers. The tunnel lining needs to be strong enough to handle the load of a double-deck motorway and a billion liters of raging water. At maximum speed, the plants can turn out more than a thousand segments a week to feed the teams working both the north and south tunnels. Back in the TBM, the workers have finally mastered the machines and the smart is on schedule. Now, it's a race to build faster and faster. We are always competing with each other for the ring build. If uh, they build six rings, we have to build seven. Okay, if, if they build seven, we have to try for eight, of course. While speed is important to the tunnelers, the project's engineers have other worries on their minds. Kuala Lumpur lies on some of the most treacherous ground on the planet. It's a tunnel engineer's worst nightmare, a condition geologists call karst topography. Over millions of years, 